Welcome back to the Gun Show. We appreciate you. I wore my wrong shirt today, though. I got, I got MTD. I, I guess we're we're partnered with MTD, right? Oh, we are <laughs> powered by MTD, and we're grateful for that. So, welcome back to the Gun Show. Yes, we are talking IMTS today, and we are talking JTech. I got a, my brother from another mother on camera with me today. I got Graham flew into town. So excited about that. We're talking JTech, but I also have Megan, and I also have Arthur, hey. and I've spent so much time with JTech. Really enjoy their company. I'm gonna have them ask some of the questions today as well because I love curiosity. Curiosity. Megan's already making a face like, don't set me up. I know, I know I set you up earlier today. I'm going to get you back, Megan. Don't you worry. But Graham, we are talking IMTS. We're going to be on your booth Tuesday from 3 to 5, booth number 338-700. We're going to be there. We're going to be sharing. We're going to be excited. We want people to be there the whole week with you, though. What are we going to see on your booth this go-round? Welcome back to the gun show, my friends. This is the VIP edition. Yeah, you're going to see an incredible variety of, uh, of equipment. So obviously the, the JTEC uh, family, so our, our corporate uh, identity through JTEC Japan is our horizontal machining centers. So we're going to have two horizontal machining centers there, but we're also going to have a collection of grinding machines that also come out of our JTEC Japan facilities. And then uh, the partner companies that we work with, so through Wheelie Mechatronic out of, uh, out of Taiwan that we have uh, ownership stake in, uh, we'll have four machines from Wheelie Taiwan, uh, you know, bridge machines, turning machines, some five-axis machines. And then you're just going to see a, a collection of different uh, robot load automation solutions, gantry load automation solutions. So really a good variety this year of, uh, of product that we're excited to show off. Yeah, I can see why. For good reason. Yeah. What a, I mean, and you guys, I mean, you do have wonderful partners and machines to provide for people and, and bringing it all together. I recently spent some time, uh, as you know well, I went to India with these guys. Uh, Suzette's amazing. The Indian culture is amazing. And I want to say something. I, I said it many times. When you see the videos come through, Graham, you'll be like, did he say it too many times? But I was so <laughs> fascinated because I would, I would certainly make the discussion that when we think about dominant machine tool countries, we think of our Germanys and our Japans as a general rule, right? I mean, great machines come from all over the world. Let's not get twisted about that. But as a general rule, we go, well, the best come from these two, you know, that kind of thing, right? When I was in India filming with your colleagues over there, Graham, they were hand scraping those machines. And I was, I think stunned is a strong word, but I'm going to use it anyway. When I walked in, saw their own forging, making their own castings, doing their own hand scrape. And I go, oh my gosh. The quality is here too. This is a quality machine and we need to break this stereotype. So I just want to share that with you guys. I'm going to leave it open. Author, we'll start with you as well. Graham's a good friend of mine. I mean, great <laughs> machine lineup as well. So I'll leave it open to you first to just generally ask some questions so we can excite everyone who's watching and listening, right? Come to the booth. Come to the booth, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you want to check out the booth. That's for sure. It's so when you're talking about the, just the variety, it just seems like you guys have technology solutions for all the way from the small end to very large when you're starting to talk about gantry and everything else like that. What, where's the focus going to be for IMTS? Are we seeing like really big machines? Are we seeing more compact automated machines? What, what are you bringing? Yeah, so I mean, th there certainly is a limitation for IMTS. We can't yeah. bring all the, you know, super, super big gantry style machines. Um, you know, the largest machine we make is actually a 20 meter gantry. So oh, wow. you won't see that at IMTS, <laughs> uh, but you'll see the smaller representation of it in kind of like the 80 inch by 47 inch smaller uh, bridge type machining center. And then we can kind of have the conversations about what the sizes above that look like. Um, yeah. so you didn't know JTEC rented out an entire hall to show off their yeah, bigger machines? Yeah, you need the entire hall. <laughs> it's not a booth anymore, it's just an entire hall. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome, though. That would be that awesome, would be wouldn't so it? so cool. Yeah. <laughs> you could just show up with a giant block of material, and it just finishes a car throughout the show, and you drive the car off at the end, wheel it off. There's an idea. Yeah, there you go. You could probably do that, right? We, we yeah. always try to sell machines off the floor at IMTS, right? That's every uh, machine tool manufacturer's dream. It, yeah generally doesn't work out so <laughs> normally we have to send them to a, a holding area first before they find their uh, ultimate home but yeah. oh we're changing that today we're so you have machines for sale there on the booth go. this time of course there yeah, you everything, go everything's for sale i like it i like it <laughs> megan i know you've had time to think this through i didn't throw you completely under the bus right i mean you still are throwing me under the bus fine. <laughs> come <always> on <laughs> i'm just kidding but you know throughout like the conversations that we've had yesterday and today we've come up with a lot of the buzz terms like artificial intelligence digital twins Arthur mentioned a couple interviews back automation uh, vision systems everything like that so in terms of like 
what the current trends are and demands are for automating things, what is your strategy on the types of machines that you're bringing in to, to show at IMTS to kind of hit on some of those talking points for your customers? Sure, yeah, a, a lot of what we've got coming to IMTS is more kind of proof of concept to mm -hmm. have the conversation. So on the, uh, the Takasawa Taiwan side, we're just gonna have a small two axis lathe with an integrated gantry loader, right? That's a factory integrated gantry loader comes in ready for customers to make their parts day one without any, you know, uh, concerns about, uh, you know, setting it up or, or just the implementation of that system, make it super easy for them, right? Mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the ACE uh, Micromatic side, uh, we've got two separate solutions for robot loaders on that. So um, one of them is just kind of a pick and place robot uh, that sits like a pre-engineered robot solution that sits in front of the machine, like a drawer loading system. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that we set up our uh, equipment coming in from uh, the ACE uh, India partnership is they're all ready to go for that robot. So Ethernet IP, uh, communication protocol all set up, auto doors, light curtains, I mean, all that fun stuff uh, for in the standard machine package. So, you know, we're definitely there to show that off. So those are some of the smaller components. Mm -hmm. And as we get a little bit larger, uh, we're bringing in a, uh, a unit that does uh, 20, 20 pallets. It's one of the uh, Trinity AX HD uh, robots. And we've got that integrating in our floor right now. So that's more, you know, your 100 pound, your 150 pound part pallet loading onto either a three axis or a five axis solution. So we've got that solution we're gonna show off. And then on the, uh, on the horizontal machining centers, uh, two station, 12 pallet, uh, pallet system. So Cranky. we've kind of got like a little bit of Big as your booth. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, <laughs> yeah. got, we've got a lot it's of automation. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We've yeah. got a lot of automation solutions that we're, you know, happy to talk about. And then, of course, I mean, we'll do the full, uh, you know, pedestal robot, pick and place, complete cells. It's just kind of hard to put that together for, for mm -hmm. the show specifically. I did research uh, for my next opportunity uh, because I wanted to write a book. And uh, I came across this statistic that 70% of small business owners want to fund their retirement through the sale of their business, when in fact only 20% of them actually had a saleable business. And it just, it broke my heart, uh, anticipating the fact that baby boomers, there was a light at the end of the tunnel, and in fact it was a train. And so I really wanted to do something about that. So I wrote a book called Scaling the Exit, that's what, the purpose of the book was to articulate a strategy for small to medium sized business owners to increase the value of their business to the extent that they could actually sell it and fund their retirement. And that was really the first iteration of what became EBITDA Growth Systems and our brand promise, which is to double the valuation of small to medium sized businesses, specifically in terms of an, uh, an exit, but double their valuation um, or we give them their money back. So you mentioned earlier too, Tony, like when people think of high quality machining, they usually go towards Germany and some of the other countries. So mm -hmm. like how is JTEC really separating themselves from those other countries to, to kind of be at the top level for people to think of when they think machining? Sure, yeah. So for the, the horizontal machining center lineup, we've kind of always been a premier uh, machine tool. Certainly a lot of high-end machines come out of, uh, come out of Japan. The, mm -hmm. Certainly the legacy Toyota, now JTEC product line, and you know, some of our core competitors out of Japan that focus on horizontal machining centers, your, you know, your Makinos, your Mori Seikis, yeah. and, and all of those other guys. So, I mean, definitely we've got a... Um, you know, a production quality to our machine, which all comes from the construction of it and the quality of the components that we use inside. Gotcha. Yeah, well said, well stated. How am I exactly doing? Right. So far, so good. Robust. I'll grade you at the end. I'll grade you at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Author, any follow-ups from you before I dive in? Is, is she going to get a gold star? We'll find out. I don't this? know. We'll find out. I'm going to let the audience be the judge. All these all the people on the outside at the end of this. <laughs> well, it's... It's looking at all of this, like, it, I think one of the ways when you're asking, like, how are they differentiating themselves? Well, one of the things is they're working with MTD, right? They're bringing Tony in and they're, they're, now Tony's getting to see the hand scraping and bringing awareness to the quality that's going in in their factory floor. I think that's a huge component of it. Yeah. Like, we are a very loud voice for the industry so that you can be aware of these hidden gems that are, that are fantastic solution partners to work within your supply chain to get your products to customers. I mean, MTD is a great platform for that that really sets mm -hmm. you out to, to be there 
with not just people that are kind of interested in manufacturing, our community is super passionate about manufacturing. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Even all the people that we've got, the ch we're all chatting off, like we're all super passionate. I think that's a great way for JTAC to, to get on that stage and bring awareness to that brand. You know, I want to talk about one of the machines as well, and really great point, by the way, and, and I loved going there, and, and I think, Graham, well done on your side as well. We love working with you. Uh, but I want to talk about one of the machines that, that I like a lot because I the first... I don't know, 20, 30 machines that I ran and programmed early on in my career were all turning centers, right? Sure. And then you have the vertical ones. And I just immediately think of the floor space and the gravity and the chips falling and the capabilities of horizontal machining, but to vertically integrate a turning center. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's, that's a big part of our uh, offering. And actually, two of our partners, uh, up to roughly... 40, 50 inch size, uh, size range, that's gonna be our Taiwan Takasawa partnership. So we have multiple offerings up to that kind of 50 inch size range. And then once we get larger than 60 inch, and we'll have one of them uh, from Wheelie Mechatronic in our booth at this IMTSU uh, show, a 60 inch uh, VTL basically with a tool changer, milling capability. Uh, first time that that machine's been introduced in the, uh, in the US market. So we're really excited about that offering. Then we get bigger, right? We go two meter, two point five meter, three meter. We do we do some big parts on the turning side um, from wheel. But yeah, a, a, to your point, if you've got you know big wide parts, you can have this giant footprint for a horizontal lathe, or you could go vertical and fit it into this nice tight little shoebox. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've got a project we're working on right now, and I mean it's 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 big volume of uh, of turning. We're talking twenty plus machines. And the, the floor space savings by going vertical, I mean, it's not even an option to even consider horizontal at that point. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, great, great product line. Um, and, and, yeah, it definitely has uh, a lot of benefits when we're talking about, you know, packing machines in. Yeah, 100%. I want to bring up two more things, uh, and you guys will have some questions as well. We got a little bit of time on that clock mm -hmm. still. Plus, uh, you know, we like Graham, so maybe we'll stick around a little longer just because he's just because he's awesome. Hey, there we uh, go. But two things I want to bring up is uh, also when we did that tour together and you were so good on camera, by the way, and so good at explaining all the different aspects as we walked around your shop. We were talking grinding as well. And something that I think sets you apart is machine uh, spindle repair. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of cool. So can we talk about those two things also? Yeah, and uh, I remember that day because I think you told me we had 20 minutes and then about two hours and 20 <laughs> minutes into it, I'm like looking at you and you're like, no, it's okay, it's okay, keep going, keep going. You're like, it's my show, I do what I want. <laughs> I, do what, I do what I want. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, grinding machines have always been a big part of our core business. And actually, uh, worldwide for JTEC Corporation, uh, they, they actually build build and uh, install more grinding machines than anything else. So I mean, mm. you can consider maybe like a, a Toyota Motors facility where you have, you know, one plant, but it's got 150, you know, cylind cylindrical OD grinders. Um, so that, that is a part of our core business. And uh, actually at IMTS, we'll have two of our uh, JTEC grinding machines. And just kind of like a little note that we've started to see is a lot of job shops, they may not necessarily do OD grinding. Uh, but they, they, they job it out, right? They've got a guy yeah. that they send it to, and they're spending maybe five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month to send out their grinding. Uh, the machines we're bringing into the show are kind of like entry-level, cost-competitive grinding machines, and we're seeing a push for some of these customers that are tired of paying that outsource fee for the grinding machines that are now looking at our, you know, kind of entry-level 150000 to 200000 maybe somewhere in that range, uh, grinding machines, and it starts to add up as you send that work out. So uh, we're seeing a big uh, increase in that. And then to your other uh, question about the uh, the spindle repair, yeah, we've, we've been doing that for a long time, 20 plus years now. Um, we've got over 200 spindles in stock on our shelves, about half of those are rebuild. Uh, so we've got that swap out program that anytime a spindle goes down, it comes from us, right? We've got like a, a running five year, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know if it was necessarily necessarily a goal, but for five years, anytime one of our customers that's called in in our addressable market in uh, in North America, we've had a spindle ready to go. Mm, wow. We haven't had to have them wow. ship it to us and turn it around and send it back out, just ready to go. So yeah. I mean that that's a huge investment to be uh, able to have that. Another um, kind of unique story I had: we had a, a customer with a bunch of legacy machines. We're talking 25-year-old machines, 20-year-old, even some that were approaching 30 years old. And we had them in for a, uh, a factory tour, 
and I had our spindle guys mark every spindle that was on the shelf that was still sitting there that if their spindle went down on their 26-year-old horizontal, we had it ready to go. So, wow. I mean, that was that was pretty cool. The, the guys really appreciated that. Uh, Two things that yeah. immediately pop into my head when hearing these stories is, one, we are seeing more and more shops vertically integrating themselves. So you're seeing an increase in some of the purchases, right? It's because we don't want to job things out as much anymore. I think... I think we we can we can blame COVID for a lot of things, but it also taught us that there's two giant ponds on either side of the U.S. And the more we can do in our own house, right. you know, and a, and a, then we're now we're talking service and support. So if we're gonna vertically integrate, aligning ourselves with a company that's there for us when or if there's not really if it's just a matter of when, right? Something goes wrong, we need that service and support. So that was two things I gathered. As you can see, we're running short on time. Yeah. I'm gonna give you guys each an opportunity for one more question or a high five to Graham and. And then we'll give Graham the opportunity to just give his uh, closing statement about IMTS and, you know, what we'll feel when we come to your booth and we walk off. What are we going to leave with? So just giving you a heads up of what's coming as well. A little prep time. Not for Megan, though. Appreciate I like to throw it. her right under the bus. But everyone you else. just run me over. <laughs> no, I, think, I think it's really comforting to hear that you have things available, especially for those legacy machines, because how many times in manufacturing have we heard people invest in something and then when they need something fixed or they need that customer support? Support, those parts and components aren't available anymore because they just don't make them anymore. So I think when people invest in Jade Tech, they have that extra comfort of knowing that, yeah, we're still going to get that quality customer support, even if we have older machines that will stop working or, you know, have the downtime. So I think that's really cool on Jade Tech's yeah. part. Look, right now, kids are looking at what they're gonna be doing in the future. And some of them don't even know what a career in manufacturing could look like. So what we're trying to do is support organizations and initiatives that are telling kids what a career in manufacturing is. So help us give back by purchasing Shop Floor Coffee. You can find us at shopfloorcoffee.com. We're on LinkedIn. Contact us, let us know how we can support you and your organization. For sure. And, and I mean, another uh, kind of key piece to that is um, for those customers that have those older machines, if it if it makes sense, I mean, we also rebuild them, too. So we That's have cool. a, a separate facility. So there's a lot of our um, there's a lot of machine tool builders that kind of work in some strategic planned obsolescence in their new products. Uh, yeah. That's not something that we subscribe to. We try to keep, uh, you know, platforms live. So right now, the new uh, 5000 series horizontal that's in the booth, mm -hmm. the pallets that go on that machine, we went out of our way to make sure that someone who's got a 30 year old uh, 5500 machine from us can take that pallet and put it right on our brand new machine and right on our pallet pool, right? Nice. That's awesome. so, wow. I mean, it, it seems like something that makes sense and everyone should do, but not everyone's doing that. Well, right? and that's really important too for the smaller machine shops because again, it comes down to like budget. And yeah. like they don't want to spend all this extra money investing in new machines because the components just aren't available for their older machines. So sure. that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you're talking about their, so if I'm understanding you right, like the older version, they buy the newest version, they can still use the same pallets? Correct. That's awesome. So you're talking about like investments from companies that are like, look, I know I need new machines, but look, I've already spent, you know, half a million dollars on pallets or a quarter million dollars on pallets. I don't want to lose that investment if I, if I ship anchor that machine. Yeah. They can just buy the new one with your systems and, and potentially still use those pallets, everything they've already invested, all the custom fixturing, all the, the refinement they've put all those decades into and just update and keep using them. Correct. Yep. That awesome. that just that does not happen I, <laughs> right. in manufacturing. Right. Right. Everybody that wants just, to sell a whole package, yeah. right? And make money. Oh yeah, here's your new machine. You got to buy all new pallets yeah. too, and all new tool holders, and all new this. My and all iPhone new that. keeps doing it to yeah. me too. They right. switch up my yeah. cable every single time. Yeah. but not JTEC. No, that's so one of our uh, I guess kind of unique customer installations is we've got a customer out in the Northeast, and he's got. Uh, an older cell of our 450 platform pallets. Uh, six machines, each one with about 300 uh, to 400 tools, different iterations along the way, right? Yeah. So he's running a uh, Fanuc uh, 16 series and a uh, 30 series, and now the new <laughs> 31M <laughs> IB plus uh, machines on this same cell, right? Yeah. And he called us up and he said, okay, we're, we're ready. We want to duplicate this cell. So now these guys are up to, you know, almost 400 pallets. You know, wow. they've got 500 plus tools on all of the new machines yeah. and everything talks between their 
older system and their newer system. Interchangeable pallets. All the pallets are ID'd so they can run in either cell. I mean, it, it's it's pretty That's cool. cool. All, when all we powerful, do things man. Like uh, all the way from the Fenix 16 all the way up to the newest 31, they right. all talk. They all talk to our uh, <laughs> cell controller, awesome. right? Incredible. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's amazing, yeah. Well, I mean, that should be the closing statement, but we're not going to stop there, Graham. We're not stopping there. <laughs> I, All right. I tried. <laughs> I, come, I come to your booth at IMTS. We're, you've rented an entire hall, apparently, and I spend time with you. What am I leaving with? What, what message am I going to receive when I walk off that day of, of why I'm coming to see you, and what am I going to feel when I leave? Sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, when you come into our booth, you're going to see, you're going to walk in and basically just look at a bunch of different solutions to be able to make your parts more efficiently and a little bit more, you know, unmanned. Um, not everyone's ready to go 100% unmanned or lights out. Mm -hmm. Some people are, right? We have that conversation on a regular basis. The customers that already have 50 robots in their booth, they want to talk about the nuts and bolts of our coolant system and how we're going to stop those chips from, you know, piling up and stopping their robots from, uh, from running. There's going to be other people there that have a shop of 20 C-frame verticals and it's kind of scary, but we're looking at horizontal machining center manufacturing as the next step for them towards automation. So we'll be there. We'll be ready to have those conversations and to help customers find solutions for whatever their need might be, wherever they're at in that kind of search for, um, you know, more efficiency in their manufacturing with good quality production products from all over the world. So. Well, Graham, I will for sure see you there. And when am I going to see you? Tuesday, 3 to 5, on booth number, or hall number, 338-700 is where I'll see you. The last thing I'm going to do before I close this out is just say, Arthur, Graham, Graham, Arthur, he'll be filming that testimonial for you coming up in Wisconsin. Yeah. So this is your guy. We're going to see you there, and we're <laughs> going to see you at IMTS. Join us. We, we, we want to see you. And thank you for your time here as well. Graham, you're amazing. Megan? Yeah, you did pretty good. Yeah, we'll give thanks. you a gold star. <laughs> Arthur, good to see you, buddy. Appreciate your time as well. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and we will see you again soon.